Good morning, and welcome to Concordia Lutheran Church's virtual worship. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for God is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, God gathers the outcasts of Israel, God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God determines the numbers of the stars. God gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. God covers the heavens with clouds, prepares for the, earth, the rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. God gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. God's delight is not in the strength of a horse, nor God's pleasure in the speed of a runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. The psalmist reminds us this morning that God cares for the downtrodden and the brokenhearted. We sometimes forget that God always cares for those that, among us who are most vulnerable. And for those of us who live in relative comfort, a reminder that all that we have comes from God and it is intended not just for us, but to help others. Jesus shows us again and again God's care for those on the margin. Jesus shows us that God's kingdom is a place where everyone matters and everyone is cared for. This was God's intention from the beginning, to have a place where people are loved and cared for and to have people care and love for one another. We are often far from that place, aren't we? But Jesus Christ continues to come to us, heal us, so that we might be a healing presence in the world. I don't know if you feel the way that I do, but I do feel like every day I have an opportunity somewhere in my day to help someone else. Every day is an opportunity to serve others, to help them see God's love for them. Sometimes it's as easy as a kind word to someone in a grocery store, or sometimes we get to give some of what we have to someone else in need. Today, for example, I get to go and serve at the friendly kitchen. Tomorrow I might get to help someone get gas or comfort someone who is struggling. And as a congregation, we get to do this work together. I get to help more people because of how generous the people in our congregation are. And today in our sermon, we're going to talk more about how Jesus heals us so that we might be able to serve others. I'd like to thank Jim Doyle for being here to record this morning, and Gail Fist for singing, and Janet for playing the piano. Let us sing together our gathering song, number 532. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be known to all to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gospel for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick and various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. So in the Gospel of Mark, crowds are a problem. They are a problem because they seem to misunderstand the nature of Jesus' mission. Um, the crowds make it about Jesus. They want to celebrate him. They want to revere him. They think that this is about Jesus. And Jesus has no interest in being a celebrity. Jesus has no interest in being a rock star preacher who casts out demons and heals the sick. Jesus is interested in only one thing. Bring the kingdom of God to earth. Showing people how to live a kingdom life. Showing people what it looks like to serve and love others. But people are caught up in the flash. They're caught up in the miracles. And they don't understand to see, they don't seem to understand the kingdom work. They want the show, the casting out of the demons and the healing of people. In Mark's gospel, whenever Jesus heals someone, he tells them right away, tell no one what has happened. He tells them to keep it to, him, to themselves. And in today's gospel, he refuses to let the demons talk because they might confess who Jesus really is. They might tell everyone that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And then Jesus' teachings will be washed away. People will stop listening to him as they press to get a piece of this rock star Messiah. Jesus in Mark's gospel is focused on the task at hand to proclaim that the kingdom of God has come here to tell people the good news and have them repent of their sins. And it's not surprising, is it, that people are not really interested in the repenting of the sins part. They're really just interested, and they're really not really that interested in the kingdom of God. They're just interested in the ways that they can use Jesus to get what they want, to heal them or change their fortunes. Now, if you have ever been in a involved in any church, you will know how hard it is to do kingdoms, the kingdom's work. You will know how hard it is to convince people to not think about themselves, not think about their church, but to think about the wider mission. It's hard to get people to work in unison. It's hard to get people to see that Jesus is not there to solve their problems. Jesus is not there to make their life better. But Jesus is here so that we can know what it is to bring the kingdom to earth. Jesus is an example of what it looks like to be about this mission above all else. In today's gospel, Jesus heals Simon Peter's mother-in-law so that she can serve. And that same Greek word is used in, that's used in today's gospel for serve is the same word that Jesus uses to describe his own mission. The Son of Man came to serve. The healing that happens throughout our relationship with Jesus is meant to be a catalyst for us to serve. And Simon Peter's mother-in-law is an example of that life of a disciple. It's meant to help us see the kingdom and live in it. It is meant not 
only to cast out our demons, but for us to be able to serve in the world to help others cast out their demons. And the whole time, to not make it about us. Instead, make it about the kingdom of God that we want to see in the world. It's a tough thing to ask. It's a tough thing for us to do. I know this as a pastor. One of the hardest jobs any pastor has is to not make it about me. To not make it about how many people show up on Sunday or how much money people put in the plate or how many compliments I get. But to make it about what, and not to make it about what I want to do, but what God wants us to do. And to be able to tell the difference between those two things. It's easy to get caught up in your own need to be admired and liked. And Jesus knew that trap and avoided it. Sure, he could have stayed in Capernaum and became a local celebrity. Maybe his status could have grown beyond that, drew people from all over. But that was not Jesus' mission. It wasn't about him. It was about God's mission. So Jesus moves on. Jesus goes to more unknown area. Jesus takes a chance to do more and reach out. What about us? What about us as a congregation? Are we really to risk what we have for the kingdom of God? Are we really to reach beyond ourselves? Are we, what about us as individuals? Are we willing to take a chance? Are we willing to serve? This week I, I got a call from a friend of mine, and this friend is not a religious person, doesn't go to church, probably will never go to church. And they wanted to know if I would do a wedding for his daughter. And I, I said yes, because I feel our calling is not just to the people in our congregation, but to everyone. And actually, when I said yes, he was a little surprised. He said, oh, I thought that was just for people in your church. I also know that doing that wedding, it's going to make me have to change the way I usually do weddings. But here's the thing. I'm willing to stretch myself to reach more people. I'm willing to work with anybody of goodwill to make the world less cruel, more loving, and more graceful. This person who I'm going to do the wedding for, they will never come to worship at Concordia. But what good would it do if I said no? Wouldn't that confirm for people what they already thought about Christians? That we are only in it for ourselves or only care about people because we want them to join the church? That isn't the point of being a person of faith. It can't just be about how we're going to get people in the pews or how we're going to pay our bills. It has to be the, about the larger mission that we all agree to pursue, to bring the kingdom of God to earth, to make this place where we live more like the heaven that we all dream of. And we can't do that if we're not willing to go, get out of our comfort zone. We can't do that if all we do is preach to each other. We can't do that if our pastor is worried about their fame and fortune. And we can't do that if we're not willing to serve the larger purpose. I think of all the people I've had the privilege to pastor. I know all of them love God. And I know that all of them love their church. I sometimes regret that maybe I couldn't get people to see that bigger picture. And I know I regret the times when I've made it about myself rather than the work that God calls us to do together. Make no mistake, that work is hard. But it starts with confession. The confession that we are selfish, we really don't want to serve others. And that can lead us to see, to seek God in all things, to ask, it asks us to seek our neighbor's good above our own, and it asks us to step out of our comfort zones. What the Gospel of Mark shows us is how hard it is for Jesus to do the kingdom work. It shows us how, how much people, like Jesus' own disciples, misunderstand it. It shows us that in serving, we die to ourselves and ride us to serve God and God's kingdom. It shows us that people will not all get on board with God's agenda. It will bring opposition. It will bring out the demons who want us to chase our own egos. Jesus brings in the kingdom of God. Jesus teaches us that that kingdom is about service of others. It's about loving others. It isn't about the miracles, and it isn't about a rock star messiah, because ultimately it's about you and me and our willingness to follow Jesus. It's about how we have been healed by Jesus so that we can get up and serve others. Amen. Let's sing together, together today our hymn of the day, Healer of Our Every Ill, number 612.
Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organization, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom and service to those they most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, especially Alva, Adeline, Karen, Bill, Teresa, Kathy, Ernest, Danny, Kim, Ken, Sal, Valerie, Florence, Teresa, Joe, Vicki, Gail, Thomas, Ernie, Karn, Gethsemane Lutheran Church, Carol, Nicole, Carol, John, Dean, Mike, Gretchen, Helen, Barbara, Bill, Liesel, Karen. We pray for those who grieve, the family and friends of Judy, Grace, Eric, and Dick. Remember our homebound, Betty Lee and Florence, and pray for our men and women in the service, Daniel and Joshua. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For this congregation, for outreach and social ministries centered here, for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place who open to us new understandings, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labors, for their lives, for their lives serve as let their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Here our own prayers may be offered aloud or in our hearts. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus brings the kingdom of God to us. Jesus heals us so that we can serve. Jesus shows us the way to a godly life. Jesus shows us the way to care for others. And Jesus shows us how to give selflessly. As Martin Luther once wrote, the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power that is, in works and practice. God loves the doers of the world in faith and love, and not the mere hearers who, like parrots, have learned to utter certain expressions with readiness. Or as Albert Schweitzer once said, there can be no kingdom of God in the world without the kingdom of God in our hearts. Or not Han, the kingdom of God is available to you here and now, but the question is whether you are available to the kingdom. Or Cornell West, if the kingdom of God is in you, you should leave a little bit of heaven wherever you go. I'll leave you this morning with a thought from Mark Nielsen. Then and now, Jesus witnesses that ours is a God who seeks us out and whose kingdom proclaims, pay attention to what is lost 
be tender to all that is broken, fragile, and wounded in our world. Now may the God who heals and loves each one of us keep you each day, and may you keep the charge entrusted to you to love your God and your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Our sending song today is I Love to Tell the Story, number 661. Thank you for being with us this morning. I hope in our song and our words that you heard something that was healing so that you might be God's presence in this world. I'd like to uh, thank Jim Doyle for recording and Gail for singing and Janet for playing. If you would like to support our ministry in the comments section is a link to our PayPal account. You can give through that. And now go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.